Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to study the softmax function end to end. We are going to see what softmax function is, its derivation with the cross entropy cross function, and lastly, how it behaves with respect to the inputs. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and also like the video. Okay, so what is the softmax function? Well, it is the function that is applied on the last layer of the neural network when we are doing multi class classification. So let's suppose we have a task where we are given MNIST handwritten image data set and asked to classify which number is on the image. We will use a neural network and let's say we gave each pixel of the image of 7 as input to the neural network and at the last layer we got this as the output. What softmax function will do is to take all these outputs and convert them into a probability distribution. How? We'll see in a moment. Since there are 10 digits 0 to 9, we will have 10 output neurons in the last layer. And for every output in the last layer, we'll apply the exponent function. After that, we calculate the sum of the exponents of all the outputs and divide all the outputs with the sum. So let's summarize what we did till now. Well, we first applied the exponent function. The exponent function gives us two benefits. One, that it converts all numbers positive and negative to positive. If you remember the e to the power x graph, which you can also see here, the graph never turns negative. The second advantage that the exponent gives is that it helps in finding derivatives easily, as we will see here in some time. After that, we divided the exponents by the sum of individual exponents, which means that now we have a valid probability distribution and if we sum all the individuals, we get 1. So the output which we get is nothing but the predicted probability distribution. Now let's see how the outputs of the softmax function depends on the outputs of the neural network. As you can see here, greater the value in the output neuron, greater the value in the softmax function. The reason for that, as you can see here, is that the exponent function is an increasing function. One more important thing to note here is that even when the output of the number is very large as in this case shown here, our softmax still predicts a value that is less than 1 for that output. Now let's start finding the derivatives for the softmax function with respect to the outputs of the neural network. We will let the outputs of the neural network be called z0 to z of 9 and we will call the outputs of the softmax to be s of 0 to s of 9. So what we have to find is dou s of i by dou z of j or this. As you can see, this does not seem to be very very simple. The reason is that every output of the softmax function, let for example say s of 3, is dependent on every output of the neural network, z of 0 to z of 9. This basically means that we have to find the derivative of each softmax output with respect to each of the neural network output. Well, to do that, we have to first take the log of the softmax and then find its derivative. So, the partial derivative of log of s of i with respect to z of j equal to 1 by s of i into dsi by dzj. So rearranging the terms, we get this. Then we substitute the value of log of s of i in the RHS and we get log of s of i equal to the expression that you can see. Now we know the formula that log of a divided by b is equals to log of a minus log of b. For the simplification gives us z of i minus log of summation of e to the power z of l where l varies from 1 to n. Here n equal to 10. And then if we find the partial derivatives with respect to z of j we get this. If we pause here for a second we can say that there will be one case where i will be equal to j and in all other cases i will not be equal to j. So when we take the second case where i is not equal to j, we will have dou of z of i by dou of z of j equal to 0 and when i equal to j, we will have it equal to 1. Even the second part which is this can be simplified. We will take the derivative of the log and we will get this. So finally we got this expression. Now focus on this part alone. We see that if we expand the summation, we get e to the power z of 0 plus e to the power z of 1 and in between e to the power z of j to e to the power z of 9. Then we find the derivative with respect to z of j. So we can write this, which can be rewritten as this and all except partial derivative of e to the power z of j with respect to z of j will be 0 and this will be e to the power z of j. And so if we finally put together the equation, we get this. Now, if we remember from the left hand side, we had this. And so now we can have s of i into 1 of if i equal to j minus s of j. So if i not equal to j, we will have minus s of i s of j. And if i equal to j, then s of i into 1 minus s of j. So if we take the above formula and create a matrix of every i and j, we get this matrix. Now we can finally club this with the cross entropy function. 
If you haven't checked out my video on entropy and cross entropy, then search for it on YouTube and go see it. The reason is you need to understand cross entropy to be able to follow along in this lecture. So, if you remember, the cross entropy formula was negative summation of p of x into log of q of x. Here, p of x is the true distribution. That is, for our image 7 given to the neural network, the true distribution should look like this, which is one hot encoding with zeros at all the positions except at the location of the digit 7. q of x is the predicted distribution which is the softmax values. So let's change p of x to y of i which are these individual positions and q of x will be s of i. So the cross entropy cross function in our case will look something like this and we'll call it L. So to find the derivatives of the neural network outputs Z of J with respect to the cost function L, we get this. So if you look into the right hand side, we have a log which can be factorized and we get this. And now if you remember that the last term dou of S of i by dou of Z of J could be rewritten as this. And we saw the matrix also. And now after replacements, we finally get this. The S of i in the numerator and the denominator gets cancelled. Now, after the cancellation, we get something like this. Now let's break this into two parts where i equal to j and i not equal to j. So we get this. So the left part is when i equal to j and the right part is when i is not equal to j. Simplifying the left part, we get this. If you now club these two parts, we get something like this. We know that the summation of all the y's equal to 1 as this was our true distribution. So at last, we get s of j minus y of j. So we can finally write our equation as dou of L by dou of Z of J equal to S of J minus Y of J. So the above can be read as the derivative of the loss function L with respect to any of the output of the neural network denoted by Z of J. So for every output of the neural network, that is, let's say for example, Z of 0, the derivative of the loss will be S of 0 minus Y of 0. For Z of 1, it will be S of 1 minus Y of 1. And so for 0 of 7, it will be s of 7 minus y of 7. And for obviously 0 of 9, it will be s of 9 minus y of 9. If you remember, y was our true distribution and it had 0 at all the positions except where it was 1 for the position that corresponded to 7 with our image. What this means is that all of y of 0, y of 1 up to y of 9 except y of 7 will be 0 and only y of 7 will be equal to 1. So if I write all the s of j minus y of j in an array, we get something like this. We can now use this for back propagation. Now let's have a quick example for an input image 1. So first, we will give our neural network the image and then it will throw out 10 numbers. We will take the exponent of each of the number and divide it by the sum of all the exponents. This will be called softmax. Now since we know that we have put the image of 1, then the y vector or the true distribution will be something like this with zeros at every position except 1 at the position of 1. Then we subtract the true distribution y from the predicted softmax distribution and we get this. Now how to use this for back propagation is a topic for the next video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Thank you.